spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil, olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation. And it shall be a statute forever in your generations. The Eternal Light. In October 1944, in conjunction with the Jewish Theological Seminary, NBC began broadcasting one of the longest-running religious programs in radio history. It was called The Eternal Light. Then, in its 13th year, The Eternal Light dramatized stories from ancient Judea, along with contemporary works like The Diary of Anne Frank. It was produced by Milton Krentz. Many top New York radio actors appeared. NBC donated the airtime, and the seminary paid for the show's production. On Sunday, October 13, 1957, at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time over NBC's WRCA in New York, the Eternal Light took to the air with a story on the Glastonbury cows. The Boston Tea Party, the battles of Concord and Lexington, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the birth of the Constitution. Place next to these, unblushingly, in the archives of freedom in the annals of liberty, the case of the Glastonbury cows. This is a true story about two spinster ladies, a book, a small New England town, and seven extraordinary cows. The ladies' names were Julia Evelina Smith and Abby Hadassah Smith. The book is the book of books, the Holy Bible. The town was Glastonbury, Connecticut. Each of these seven cows also had a name, but we'll save that for later in the story. To understand the case of the Glastonbury cows at all, you have to know something about the ladies who owned them. Neither Miss Abby nor Miss Julia were exactly retiring types. As a matter of fact, Miss Abby was thought by some of the Glastonbury folks to be rather a talkative person, especially talkative about her family. It with the Bible. Nobody couldn't forget the Bible in our house. Not for a minute. Now, you just take the names. Mother's name was Hannah Hadassah Hiccup. Father's was Zephaniah Smith. I suppose you know who Zephaniah was. If memory serves me right, he was the son of Cushing. Abby Hadassah was Smith uh, was a bit talkative, I suppose, much more talkative than her sister, Kaya. Julia. And the word if it had been Lord up to Julia, possibly no one would even son. know about the case now, of the Glastonbury cows. Now, don't you go saying a thing against Julia. Why, Julia was my support and help all through. Julia may be quiet, but when she puts her mind to something, she stays with it. Well, for once, Miss Abby is understating the fact. Uh, Miss Julia, for example, spent nine years translating the entire Bible from the original Hebrew. Why? Well, Julia allowed is the English version that rested on our parlor bookshelf wasn't completely accurate. What else was there for her to do but make her own translation? Glastonbury, Connecticut in 1869, tax collectors asked two elderly sisters, Abby and Julia Smith, to pay their road taxes early. They did, but were surprised to find the town accidentally billed them a second time later in the year. The Smiths were wealthy. Their father left his daughters a large land holding, investments, and a farm. Their mother left them a sizable inheritance as well. When the sisters asked the town to correct the matter, the tax collector refused. When they tried to enter a town meeting to raise the issue, they were turned away because they were women. The frustrated sisters paid the tax a second time, but their lack of political power infuriated them. They began attending women's suffragette rallies. As their frustration grew, so did their taxes. In 1874, they were told they could not delay their taxes in exchange for a 12% interest charge, 
a courtesy afforded other taxpayers. They became convinced that modern women needed a vote and decided to stop paying taxes until they could. The tax collector seized seven cows to pay off back taxes. The sisters used a straw buyer to retrieve most of them, sparking much written debate. Critics who compared them to children only made their supporters more united. The cows became celebrities. Knickknacks woven out of their hair sold like hotcakes at fundraising bazaars that promoted women's suffrage. Julia published a book, Abby Smith and Her Cows. This seizing continued through 1878. Eventually, the sisters testified before Congress. In 1878, at the age of 81, Abby died in July. The next year, Julia, age 87, decided to marry for the first time. Her husband began paying the taxes on her property, and she repaid him in a compromise of love. The case of the Glastonbury cows really began on a brisk morning in November 1873. Now, if, as we review the facts, we find Miss Abby somewhat loquacious, perhaps we can forgive her on the basis of youth. She was much younger than her sister Julia. Abby was only 77. Julia was 82. It was Miss Abby who opened the door of the trim white homestead in which the sisters lived on that fateful morning in the year 1873. Well, good morning, Mr. Andrews. We've been expecting you. Morning, Miss Abby. Julia! Julia, it's Mr. Andrews come visiting on his annual chore. Please to come into the parlor, Mr. Andrews. Well, thank you, Miss Abby. The mornings are growing chill, to be sure. Though, I don't know as you're going to welcome the news I've brought. Mr. Andrews, no one rightly welcomes the tax collector's news. Still, there's no reason to be inhospitable. Julia, fetch a cup of hot cocoa for Mr. Andrews. He looks a bit shivery. Poured it already. Morning, Mr. Andrews. Uh, Drink it. You do look chilled. Thank you, Miss Julia. Brought some bran muffins, too. Oh, I thank you. Pity I can't repay your kindness. Mr. Andrews, I told you already we're prepared for your annual visit. My sister and I have our tax money put aside. You needn't be hesitant about asking for it. Gracious, we paid taxes every November for the past 40 years to you and Mr. Corbis Abby, before you. give him a chance to say his piece. To say his piece? Why, what would... I do believe he's trying to tell us something. Yes, I am, Miss Julia. Well, then say it, Mr. Andrews. Well, uh... Well, what, Mr. Andrews? Well, Miss Abby... It's that I have to ask you for more than I did last year. For more? Has the town council raised the tax? No, ma'am, but... Then why must you ask for more? Well, they've reassessed your property, Miss Abby. They've... That's odd. Hadn't heard of any general reassessment? No, no, there... There hasn't been any general reassessment, Miss Julia. No general reassessment? No, ma'am. George Andrews. You mean to sit there and tell us only our property's been reappraised? Well, no, no, not exactly. Yours, Miss Abby, and... Uh, uh, and what, Mr. Andrews? Oh, don't be at to all. Yours and the property of Widow Merton. Uh, and that's all? And the property of Widow Baker. No one else's? Just our land and the land of two widows? Yes, yes, Miss Julia. It's only a small rise in the tax, Miss Julia, a very small rise. I don't care if it's a penny's rise, Mr. Andrew, do you, Abby? Certainly not. We won't pay it. You won't pay it? That's right. We won't pay it, Mr. Andrews. Not one cent. But, Miss Abby, it's the law. The town council has reappraised your land. That's all there is to it. That's not all there is to it by any means, Mr. Andrews. This is a question of justice. Of justice, of course. That's exactly the word. What's unjust about it? I don't recollect you getting so riled up ever before about paying your tax. It's not the tax, Mr. Andrews. It's the principle. From what you've just told us, not one acre of land in the whole township owned by a man has risen in value. I can't help that, Miss Abby. All I can do is to collect your tax. You'll admit it's an extraordinary coincidence, Mr. Andrews. 
what what is miss julia my sister means it's an extraordinary coincidence that the town council made up only of men voted into office only by men should discover values of land have risen only for women especially women without men folk who can talk for them now you can just go back to that town council and tell them that miss abby hadassah smith and miss julia evelina smith will not pay an unjust tax you can tell them to read their bibles a bit too their bibles what's that got to do with it miss julia tell them to read the first chapter of genesis i can't tell the town council what to read miss julia i'm only the tax collector you tell them anyway tell them the lord created all men equal tell them my sister and i are just sure he meant all men and all women too you care to have another muffin Mr. Andrews? In the year 1873, the town council of Glastonbury, Connecticut, was not precisely accustomed to being advised by women, not even by the Smith sisters, who were known generally for their independence of spirit and their reservoir of learning. The chairman of the council received the tax collector's report, therefore, with great equanimity. Who? What? What's that they said, Andrews? Uh, they said for the council to read the first chapter of Genesis. I have never in, in all my years, I... Well, I'm, I'm just saying the words as they said them to me. Never mind what they said to you. You listen to what I'm saying to you. Yes, sir. You've got my ear. Oh, sir. hang your ear. You're Glastonbury's tax collector, aren't you? No, I'm telling you to collect the tax. And another thing, Andrews. Sir? You might tell Miss Abby and Miss Julia that the town council can continue to function without their advice as to Bible reading. George Andrews, the tax collector, returned to the Smith homestead and delivered the chairman's message. This time, Miss Abby suggested another reading for the council. If they're too stubborn to open the good book, tell them to read the Declaration of Independence. Tell them taxation without representation is what our forefathers fought the British about almost a hundred years ago. Miss Julia, the quiet one, had a simpler suggestion. Abby. Yes, Julia? Better still. Let's tell them ourselves. In the year 1873, women did not attend town meetings in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Women did not vote. Women were represented in the town council by their male relatives. Women never, never spoke at town meetings or requested the right to do so. Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman! Mr. Chairman, I'm asking for the right to speak. Gentlemen! Gentlemen, let us have order. Please, let us have order. You, Miss Abby, you are out of order. Completely and irrevocably out of order. Mr. Chairman, something else is out of order if I don't have the right to speak. Miss Abby, it is simply not the custom for ladies to attend town meetings. And I do believe the time's come to alter the custom, Mr. Chairman. Now, now, just one minute here. Miss Abby, we have no wish to quarrel with you. We would appreciate it if you'd sit down. This town meeting has much business to transact. What business is more important than the business of justice? Miss Abby, is there no way to reason with you? Reason? Is it reasonable that I shouldn't be heard? It's not as if I had a son or brother or father to speak for me. It's not without due deliberation that we've been willing to attend this meeting. We had no other way of coming before the men of the town. Let her speak, John. We needn't necessarily listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Miss Abby. In respect for your age, I... I'll not speak on the grounds of my age. Besides which, John, I consider it's ungallant of you to mention it. Miss Abby, speak on any grounds you will. Very well. I'll speak on the grounds of justice. We'd appreciate it if you'd speak briefly on whatever grounds. You know, that's a bit hard for you. 
<laughs> Hard or not, I'll be brief. It's not ten years since we fought a war to emancipate the slaves. What's that to do with taxes, Miss Abby? It's everything to do with taxes and with freedom. Now, what's the motto of our government? Proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. All. That's from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10. Miss Abby, you and your sisters have a peculiar propensity to teach this town council the scriptures. We didn't ask for a Bible lesson. It's as much a freedom lesson as a Bible lesson, John, as you'd know if you'd listen. All my sister Julia and I say is that liberty should be proclaimed for all the inhabitants of Glastonbury. As it is one half of the inhabitants, the men rule over the other half, the women who aren't put under the law. Miss Abby, I don't believe you're talking to the point. The point is, will you or won't you pay your rise in taxes? It's what I'm trying to tell you, all of you. We came here, Julia and I, because you raised our taxes. Ours and two widows. If you hadn't raised our taxes, we might never have thought about it. About what, Miss Abby? About how we have no voice in saying how our taxes are used. But now we've thought about it. Do we not stand on an equality with every man in this assembly before the law of God? God is a God of justice. Men and women stand alike in his sight. Miss Abby, I didn't give you the floor to make a speech for women's suffrage. If you have anything further to say about the tax that's due, please say it. All right, I'll say it. Miss Julia and I won't pay the rise in taxes. Oh, yeah, my God. That is your last word? Your very last word? Not quite. Miss Julia and I won't pay any taxes at all. Not till we have any the town. The Smith sisters returned to their quiet white farmhouse with the dark green shutters and took up the placid routine of their daily lives. Although many radio programs were canceled, the eternal light would air on radio and then television until 1989. Only one thing had changed. They paid no taxes whatsoever. 